Every morning in our van, we start by rolling up the curtains to let the light shine into our tiny home. After this, we give the van a bit of a tidy up, just shaking out our sheets and folding them away, as well as moving anything that's been left on the side from the previous day. You kind of have to do a bit of a tidy up every day when you live in a van, because if you don't, as soon as you start driving, everything could fall on the floor and break. And it's pretty helpful for us as well, to be honest, because before van life, we weren't exactly the tidiest of people. This has honestly just been the most perfect little wild camping spot. I mean, it's got compost toilets. It's got like a tap with fresh running like alpine water in. It's just, it's going to be really hard to leave this place. Yeah, we've even spoken about how like maybe we could come and live here one day when we want to build our little home in the mountains because uh, it's such a lovely, peaceful area. The hikes are beautiful around here and yeah. wildflowers everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's pretty perfect to be honest with you. But we often find that that's the case with a lot of the wild camping spots we stay in and then we find that the next place is just as beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so we're not going to get too pinned down anywhere and we're going to get back on the road. I think next on route we've got like a little turquoise lake. Yeah. We pulled over and made ourselves a bit of lunch. We treated ourselves to this vegan blue cheese and we're just gonna make some tofu sandwiches before heading out in nature to find that turquoise lake. Subconsciousness go out into the garden just in time for sunset as the sky begins to darken. Overgrown and tangled up, the bramble needs some greening. All the weeds have sprouted out, and the grass is barely breathing. What do I know? Sympathy. 
We were so mesmerized by this lake. It is so, so clear, yet also so vividly blue. And we just don't get lakes like this in the UK where we're from. Um, it's one of the many reasons why we're so captivated by the Alps and why we're determined to build a home here one day. When we got back to the van, Luffy fell straight asleep after two hours of walking and I thought this would be a really good time for me to go and have a shower because the little baby does have some separation anxiety from her mama. The place where we're parking offers showers for two euros per person and it's just so convenient we couldn't resist. Ever since we rescued Luffy, she's formed a really strong bond with Laura, which is very beautiful to see, but she's not quite there yet with me, so I'm just trying to make an effort to spend a bit of time with her each day, cuddling just the two of us, and hopefully over time she'll learn to trust me more and more. Where we're parked, there's this big strip of astroturf that Luffy absolutely adores. We would normally rest like deep in some meadows rather than on some plastic turf, but she couldn't get enough as she was just running around for ages and ages. It was actually a really lovely way to end the day and just watch the clouds turn pink as the sun began to set. I woke up early the next morning around 6am just to watch the sun rising over the snow-capped mountains. You can just about notice how the landscape changes as the light gets higher and higher in the sky every few minutes. It was really serene just being there with the mountains and the birds and the trees and little Luffy of course who came to join me but nobody else seemed to be awake and there's just something very magical about that time of day. We very rarely wake up for sunrise, but when we do, it's always worth it. Aaron didn't quite fancy the early start this morning, but eventually when he did get up, we made ourselves some breakfast. We went for some nice granola with all the toppings and decided to take it out to Luffy's favorite spot to eat. As we were eating, suddenly loads of people started turning up with like all this gear and we quickly realized that the AstroTurf that we were eating our breakfast on was actually a paragliding takeoff point. <coughs> it's fair to say that Luffy wasn't too pleased to be sharing her special place with all these new strangers, but for us it was great entertainment to watch them all fly off one by one into the mountains. 
we actually got talking to one of the paragliders who was this very friendly 75 year old French man and he was telling us about how he'd always wanted to learn how to fly and he decided that his 70s were about time that he started to train up to learn how to paraglide. It was so nice to wave him off on his first solo flight, not being strapped in with an instructor. I suppose we could all dismiss our dreams of saying that we're either too young or too old, or that we don't have enough time. And it was just lovely to meet somebody who, perhaps this wasn't the best time in his life to learn how to paraglide, but he decided I'd rather do it now than never do it at all. We just found it really heartwarming and inspiring. So this mountain where we're parked in front of today is Mont Blanc, which is I think the tallest mountain in Western Europe, mm -hmm. which is why it's so snowy, even though it's the middle of summer. Um, most mountains in the Alps aren't, don't have any snow on top of them no. in summer. And I think there's just something about it. It's just more magical. It's kind of helps the mountain to be more defined. And that contrast between a snowy peak and, you know, summer flowers in front of that is just, just for me, nothing beats it's that. It's incredibly special yeah. and we're very reluctant <laughs> To leave so we're going to take a little detour our actual route is to go south into the french alps but yeah. we're going to nip over into switzerland um just to check out this mountain range from the other side because it's mm. it's just amazing here um, and it's only about a half an hour drive and then we'll be in a different country After a beautiful sunset last night, we woke up in Switzerland and the place where we're parked overlooks this beautiful kind of milky blue reservoir and there's hills in the distance and wildflowers all around. We're just making ourselves a little spot of brunch. We often find ourselves cooking up one pot pan meals just to save ourselves the washing up, to be honest. There is one modern convenience that we do miss, which is a dishwasher. I think it's probably because we don't have hot water in the van and our sink is so tiny, it just makes washing up an absolute pain. So eating straight out of the pan like this just saves us a lot of hassle.
carefully step This is their home And you are a guest Toes in the grass Gripping with lust Looking around For fairy dust All those familiar sounds and Those familiar textures and colors And now your heart is true of all the poets and lovers. We walked uphill and at the top we found ourselves a totally secluded spot that felt like we'd stepped through a portal into a scene from The Sound of Music or something. It was completely breathtaking with all the big mountains in the background and these beautiful flowers that we just spent quite a long time just frolicking in and resting in. We decided that we wanted to spend the rest of the day outside so we nipped back to the van to grab pretty much all the supplies we could possibly need so that we could stay out all the way until sunset because after last night's one we just couldn't wait really to see the mountains glow up again. We decided to cook dinner outdoors tonight just to make the most of the summer warmth and it's one of the perks of having a portable gas stove in the van that we can really just cook anywhere we like. As we were eating we heard this rustling in the trees below and we looked over the hill and saw these enormous curling horns and they belonged to this magical looking creature. We did later google it and learnt that it's called an ibex, it's a very like native mountain creature but we kind of preferred the mystery of not knowing what it was because we genuinely thought it was from another realm. As Aaron was writing songs, I did a few little drawings of the local flower species around me. I like to document all the flowers wherever we're traveling and then I kind of bring all of those little drawings together and create a design for a tapestry inspired by all the nature adventures we've been on. We stayed outside until the night drew in and the stars appeared one by one.
If you enjoyed watching this, our next episode will be live in a week on the full moon. There'll be more relaxing adventures in forests, meadows and mountains. So be sure to subscribe to our channel where we share our simple life of freedom, parking our little cabin on wheels out here on the wild side.